the first presentation is by my favorite combination of a passionate scientist. She's uh, Cecilia Moritzen. She's the brilliant director of Cicero, who champions the cause of addressing climate change by explaining the hard facts behind intergovernmental panel reports. And now she's here to tell us that business as usual is just not an option. Please. Thank you, Cecilia. We, uh, I love your name. <laughs> Um, uh, so, uh, I will, where is the button? Oh, it's on that side. Okay. Um, I want to start with um, business as usual. <laughs> this was business as usual in 1962. It's one of my favorite ads on earth. This is the humble oil company. <laughs> And they uh, bragged in a big ad back then that uh, they supply enough uh, energy each day to melt 7 million tons of glacier. <laughs> By then, it was already 60 years since uh, the, first, uh, the hypothesis had been first phrased that uh, emissions of CO2 into the atmosphere uh, will um, uh, cause temperature changes on Earth. Uh, uh, but uh, since then, uh, of course, a lot of research have, start, uh, have gone on and by, uh, to, to their uh, defense. In 1962, the first measurements weren't really in to support that hypothesis. But we know a lot since then. And uh, since I've been a lead author of the IPCC report uh, twice, uh, I feel um, uh, very strongly uh, uh, that it's important to show you the development of the key messages of those reports. It's, this is from the working group one, which has to do with the physical climate. Uh, and in 1995, the, the, the um, second report came out and they said you could begin to discern a human impact on climate. So that was sort of a 50-50 statement whether um, humans were really uh, important for climate change or not. Then came 2001, uh, and they said exactly the same thing. Uh, well, they said now humans are dominating climate change. Uh, and, they, uh, and then the possibility, or the, the probability language they used was such that it's, they said this with more than 67% certainty. Then in 2007, the statement went out to more than 90% certainty. Uh, and then, of course, the exciting part was now in 19, uh, no, in this year, in uh, the 27th of September, the fifth assessment report was released. Uh, and what would they say about this basic statement on the front page? Are um, humans been dominating climate change uh, in the last 40, 50 years? Yeah, now we're up to 95%. More, as this means more than 95%, extremely likely. And I have to, I've said it many times, if somebody asks us to write the same report one more time to get to 96.3%, we're going to puke. <laughs> it's, uh, anything more than 90% is certain in the natural sciences. You, can, you will never have information from everywhere, you will never have data from everywhere, but this is as certain as we can be. But this is on the front page. The, the, this report is almost 2,000 pages long. There's a lot of stuff we don't know about climate, but this is not one of them. Uh, uh, so, uh, this is where the problem comes from, a breakdown on um, uh, the various emissions. Uh, and you will see that uh, as a time series from 1850 to 2010. And you will see that the um, deforestation piece, that's the green piece in the bottom, that was growing. And then it, that has been taken off since uh, uh, the last uh, few decades. But the rest has been shooting up. Do you have, uh, you have uh, coal, you have oil, you have gas. Uh, and you have a little bit that's called cement and flaring. That's the red and gray stuff on the top. And then you see also the development of human, uh, uh, also the population on Earth. And you see, of course, there's a certain relationship here. Um, uh, but in any case, the, what's been shooting up here is uh, the fossil fuel industry. Uh, now you can proceed into the future, and the future uh, uh, possibilities are endless uh, uh, of, of emissions. And you see uh, all these little gray lines, I hope you can see them, but these all represent possible future scenarios of emissions. Don't, uh, actually, there have been lines that have been co computed on, so, so you know, everyone has their own future uh, idea of the future. Uh, IPCC have been using four in this last report. The top one, the red one, is their most extreme emission scenario. 
uh, and the blue one is the uh, least uh, extreme, and then there are two in the middle. Uh, and the importance of the top one uh, is, uh, of course, that that's the line that the emissions have been on uh, and keep being on. So we uh, consider these to be uh, the business as usual scenario. And the blue one, of course, is the uh, new one for IPCC. It's the two degree scenario, which is, of course, an, uh, an, um, a, uh, a measure by the natural scientists of what is a reasonable uh, tipping point between undangerous and dangerous climate change. Uh, and to put this in perspective, this, uh, this is a global temperature on uh, uh, the last, through the ice age and up to the, um, uh, the last 10,000 years where of course uh, the uh, uh, agriculture has developed and uh, basically uh, civilization and state uh, formation, etc. And now with business as usual, we're trying to push this up four degrees, completely out of the range of the climate that we have been used to in this 10,000 uh, years. Um, now, there's a lot of regimes here uh, to, to try to break this down, as you well know, uh, and God bless the uh, UN, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the UN uh, negotiations that have been going on for the last 20 years, uh, and those who are in those will know that there have been a lot of um, progress, of course, uh, but not enough. Emissions are going up. So we need a lot of other solutions, and that's why it's great that you are working on this problem. Uh, because a lot of companies will present different futures, and this is the most common future of energy demands in the, into the future. This is what oil companies and uh, basically uh, uh, states, for instance, the Norwegian state, will use as their, uh, their image of the future. We need more fossil fuel. We need more energy. There is only one way to do this. I, I think you catch my, my drift. Um, and then we also know that there are 90 companies who've been responsible for more than two-thirds of the emissions this, since the beginning of the industrial revolution. And we also have research, economic research in our institute that shows that there are only about 100 companies in the world that will not benefit from a transformation to, uh, um, to uh, low carbon uh, society. And that's basically the same companies. So uh, there are other futures. There are other futures. This happens to be the WWF future scenario report. It's a very nice report that shows an equally plausible future, but it doesn't get the same amount of publicity. But don't tell, let them tell you there are only one way to look at the future and how to solve the energy problem. But uh, from my point of view, it's the emissions, uh, and, they, uh, and this is the most publicly, no, uh, yeah, pl publicly usable figure of this 2,000-page uh, report from IPCC that came uh, now in September. I think it's, it's probably still uh, um, uh, suffers from uh, nerdness of uh, the natural sciences, but basically what it shows you is that you tell me which temperature you want to reach, and I can tell you how much accumulated CO2, uh, I mean, how much the accum accumulated CO2 emissions can be to, to meet that. And if you pick the two-degree target, that, that, and you go back to the, the line here uh, where all the colors are, you, go, you come down to less than a thousand gigaton or petagrams carbon. Uh, and uh, there, the, the uh, business as usual scenario, if you keep following that, that's the red scenario, and the, it, it, uh, it, you have to stop. You can keep going on that line, but then if you want to stay to the two degree scenario, you have to stop somewhere around 2030, 2040 full force on emissions till then, and then you stop. Very interesting day. Uh, or you can follow the other uh, scenario. But basically what IPCC says, there's a linear, linear uh, relationship between those two factors. No matter, and it's a fantastic result really, because the climate system is really complicated. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, things here, but that is actually a fairly linear relationship. So pick your target and choose, uh, and you find how much you can uh, emit. Um, and uh, uh, that is basically where I want to leave you, uh, that uh, the, uh, thing, uh, the time is going really fast now, and uh, the uh, UN uh, 
pathway of international negotiations are not up to speed here. So don't ever estimate how important this problem is, how uh, fast this is going, and how important the legal profession is in solving this problem. I dream, I've always thought that's how we're gonna solve it. You sue the governments. <laughs> anyway, good luck with the conference. Thank you.